Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Power Plant System Engineering Module 2, Vapor Power System Part 2. So, in this lecture number 5, we will try to focus on rotodynamic machines, impulse principles, velocity diagrams. So, prior to this lectures, we have seen that how the steam power plant is being used for power generation systems. Now, one of the integral component of this power generation system is the turbine, but this turbine is considered as a rotodynamic machines and these machines have certain characteristics. So, we will try to emphasize under what category does this steam turbine fall. And then based on that we will try to classify these turbines in mainly in two aspects. One is through impulse principle, other is through reaction principles. So, the reaction principle based turbines or reaction turbines will be touched upon in the subsequent class and in this lecture we will specifically focus on impulse principles and uh, velocity diagrams and we will try to see how these uh, principles helps us in generating power by using steam as the working fluid. So, let us give some brief introduction about the rotodynamic uh, machines. So, this uh, word rotodynamic machines comes under uh, the broad roof of when you talk about fluid machines, when you talk about compressors, turbines which are used in the gas turbine power plants. Again we are uh, also used in the hydraulic power plants, we have impulse turbines, we have reaction turbines like we have impulse wheels um, or Pelton wheels, then we have Francis turbine, we have Kaplan turbines. So, these are uh, the terms that are used when you are using hydraulic machines, but all of them falls under the common roofs because they are rotodynamic machines while rotating either they produce power or they produce pressure head. So, these are the two categories this rotodynamic machines work. So, basically speaking a rotodynamic machine means it is the one in which fluid flows freely through an ampler or rotor and during this motion what happens that there is a energy transfer between the fluid and rotor which is happens in a continuous manner. So, as a result uh, there is a change in the angular moment of the fluid as the result of torque on the rotor. There are two possibility cases in this uh, situation we have. The rotor can transfer energy to the fluid or fluid can transfer energy to the rotor. So, these two based on these two we say whether it is a power consuming device or power producing device. Now, when the energy is transferred from the fluid to rotor that means, fluid is carrying a substantial amount of energy and that energy is being utilized in rotating the blades of the rotor. So, then it is known as a turbine. On the other hand, if the energy is transferred to the fluid from the rotor, then the machine is referred as fan, compressor or pump. Normally, fans are used for small pressure differences, compressors are used for large pressure differences and both fan or compressor they are mainly used for uh, gas, fluid as a gas. Whereas, for pump the word pump is being used when you are using liquid, when you are want to increase the pressure head of the liquid. Rotodynamic turbine is also classified by the direction of the flow of fluid relative to the rotor through which the angular moment of change is achieved. So, these fluid directions can be either parallel to the axis of the rotor or in the radial direction or in the mixed mode. So, basically speaking here if you look at this figure, this figure shows that we are trying to concentrate on a steam power plant which compose of boiler, turbine, condenser and pump. We are now focusing on this turbine component or to some extent pump component, but uh, mainly we will be focusing on the turbine component. And this turbine fall under the roof radial flow machine or axial flow machines. What happens in a radial flow and axial flow machines? We can see here. 
so in both the cases there is a uh, these machines are normally classified the way by which the flow direction is done uh, flow direction is achieved with respect to relate to, to the rotor positions or the direction of the rotor. So, on that basics we can have a axial flow machines or radial flow machines. So, this figure shows the schematic diagram of an axial flow machines and radial flow machines. So, what happens in a radial flow machines as you see the cross section one of the cross sections. So, if you say this uh, side view what happens the flow comes axially and it tries to pass through the impeller and impeller consists of number of blades and this energy from the fluid is taken away by this impeller and finally, the fluid uh, comes as a outlet. So, what we see here is that in a radial flow machines the flow across the blade involves substantial radial flow component at the rotor inlet exit or, or both. But when you refer to the axial flow machines what happens a majority of the component flow comes in the axial directions. So, that is the basic difference. So, they are termed as axial flow machines. In some cases we can have a mixed flow machines normally this happens when we are using liquid that means in water particularly in hydraulic turbines we can have a mixed flow machines because purely axial or purely radial is almost uh, difficult to have. So, mixed flow machines are already considered. So, in that case the velocity components may have both radial and axial directions. Uh, so, another way of looking at our philosophy or viewpoint that we will be looking mainly on steam turbines and these steam turbines are uh, mainly referred as the axial flow machines, but they are based on two fundamental principles one is impulse principle other is reaction principle. So, accordingly we call them as impulse turbines or reaction turbines. So, in our subsequent lectures mainly our focus or attention will be focused towards impulse and reaction turbines and their analysis. So, the analysis is done in two folds one is based on the rotodynamic principles other is based on the thermodynamic aspects. So, both we are trying to link up that what is the efficiency that we get while producing the power. So, let us start the first one which is impulse turbines. So, before we go for the impulse turbines we will try to focus on the fundamental principle what is called as impulse. The word impulse normally refers is the very short duration forces that means a force comes instantly and it dies down. So, how to explain this impulse principles for that reasons we consider a horizontal fluid jet which impinges on a fixed plate and what happens this fluid jet has velocity v s and it is moving in the positive x directions and this plate is fixed. So, obviously, when the jet comes and hits it and uh, since the plate cannot move and it tries to deflect. So, deflection uh, normally the direction almost 90 degree to this plane and from the both sides. So, obviously, this whatever energy it gets carries since the plate is not moving. So, there is uh, efficiency of the jet or kinetic energy of the jet is almost vanishes or goes as a loss. But in other scenario let us see that uh, if you relax this fixed conditions. So, that means, we will can make these things that plate is moving. So, how do you make this plate moving? So, you keep this uh, plate stand on a roller and that roller uh, is such that fixes this blade or plate and when the jet comes and impinges obviously, the fluid will deflect as well as this roller will also move means that plate uh, will also move. So, let us see that if you say that the plate velocity is V b and that means, this V b is initiated due to the fluid jet when it impinges on these things and side by side the fluid also deflects. So, let us th think about how much force we are applying and how much energy is being transferred. So, since this plate is moving that means, there is work is done by the fluid on the plate. So, we will let us calculate uh, them by simple uh, fundamental principle what we call as impulse principles. So, by knowing this velocity of fluid jet and velocity of the blade what we can first find out is that force or impulse imparted on the jet will be f is equal to m times b s 
and if it is in a fixed case. But if it is in a moving plate, then since plate is moving, so difference in the velocity that means relative velocity comes into picture. So, V s minus V b is nothing but the velocity of jet relative to the plate. Now, moving further, we will try to see how much work is being done. So, referring to the same figure, we need to find out what is the work done per unit time. So, we know this uh, that is nothing but force multiplied by velocity and this term comes as uh, m dot v b into v s minus v b. And because of this, uh, this is what the work done per unit time that is w dot, but uh, this work is being achieved from the fluid jet which has initial power which is nothing but your kinetic energy and that kinetic energy is nothing but half m dot time v s square. So, we have calculated the work, we have calculated the initial power, then we will be now in a position to define the efficiency of the plate. So, this efficiency of the plate can be defined by the ratio of work with respect to initial power. And so, by taking this ratio W dot by kinetic energy, we can arrive at this expressions. So, basically taking this ratio, we can arrive at this expression. But under what conditions this work done per unit time will be maximum? Now, we will be trying to find out. To find out that, we have mathematical expressions that to find out the optimum plate velocity that maximizes the power. To do that, we can differentiate this work done per unit time with respect to plate velocity V b. So, by differentiating this that is d w dot by d v b is equal to 0, we can arrive at expressions m dot into v s minus twice v b is equal to 0. This gives the optimum blade velocity v b as which is v s by 2. That means, the fluid jet of v s I mean maximum or optimum velocity for when the power is maximum is should be v s by 2. And for this optimum velocity, the maximum power that we can achieve is 1 by 4 m dot into v s square. This we can achieve by that putting v optimum speed on this work expressions, we can find out the uh, maximum power. Now, at this uh, optimum plate velocity, we can also find out the uh, maximum efficiency of the plate. This can be achieved that about 50 percent. So, this gives an indication that from a fluid jet having kinetic energy of half m dot time v s square, only 50 percent of the energy is being utilized to achieve maximum power and for which the blade velocity is or plate velocity is half of the fluid jet velocity. But still there is a question mark enough energy what is how we can improve this. Uh, that means, efficiency uh, of course, we can go for maximum power, but efficiency is less. So, to do that, let us try to change the configuration of the plate. So, for that what you change this configuration of the plate is that from this plate shape, we can imagine to have a curved surface. So, instead of plate, we will just say the blade. Uh, so, what does this do is that so, here if you see that V s uh, when it impinges it spreads on both the directions, but here we will try to see that the fluid jet enters the blade uh, in a curved blade and try to come back. I mean the fluid jet also reflects or comes back uh, in a particular direction uh, in a particular concise manner. So, to do that let us see if you can improve this uh, efficiency or you can increase this power. So, what we have uh, observed here that instead of a flat plate, if you take a cylindrical blade that allows the jet to reverse its directions. And this blade is considered as frictionless, so that there is an either expansion or contraction of the fluid from entry to exit. So, basically that we are allowing this fluid jet to travel in an organized manner, just it enters uh, at this point we say it is a inlet and it leaves this uh, blade and we call it as a outlet. So, basically this is in a organized manner. So, through this process it is possible to calculate the impulse on the blade power 
and blade efficiency and further optimum velocity also can be found out that gives the maximum power. In this case also we will follow this analysis that optimum velocity will be half of the jet weight velocity which is same as the flat plate, but the maximum power will be twice this of the flat plate and also this equals to the kinetic energy. So, in other words we can achieve 100 percent efficiency. By doing so let us see how we can prove this mathematically. So, for that reasons we also consider the same philosophy that we say V s is the velocity of the jet in the horizontal directions, V b will be the velocity of the instead of plate uh, we write that the blade in the uh, horizontal directions. So, relative velocity of the uh, fluid at the jet entry would be V s minus V b since the blade is moving at V b. So, relative velocity will be at the entry and exit will also be same. But then uh, what will happen to absolute velocity? So, the absolute velocity at the exit would be V b minus this relative velocity. So, absolute velocity at the entry is V s, but absolute velocity when it leaves is V b minus of minus V s and minus V because the jet turns the direction uh, opposite. And we are looking at the blade velocity in positive x directions and with respect to this positive x directions fluid jet moves relative to this. So, which means that uh, we will have a absolute velocity at the exit will be twice V b minus V s. So, we know the uh, inlet and exit velocity of the fluid, we can find out the what is the rate of change of force uh, momentum that is force that we can find out as twice m dot into B s minus V b. So, in the same philosophy we can find out the also work done. So, here you see that the force becomes two times that from the previous value for the case of simple plate. Then work done will be twice m dot into B b into B s minus V b same logic we initially initial power of the sub for same fluid power the kinetic energy is half m dot time V s square. So, ultimately we will be able to find out the blade velocity. So, eta b will be w dot by kinetic energy. So, by taking this ratio we can arrive at the expressions that eta b or blade efficiency is equal to 4 times entire bracket V b by V s minus V b by V s whole square. So, we can now uh, able to differentiate the work done W dot with respect to V b to find out the optimum velocity that maximizes the power. So, this gives a condition that V b will be V s by 2 optimum velocity remains same as that of flat plate W max is half m b is V s square, but earlier it was 1 by 4 m dot into V s square which means that you just compare kinetic energy of the jet and uh, maximum power they are same. So, obviously, efficiency of the blade is 100 percent. So, it means it gives an indication that it is possible theoretically it is possible that entire kinetic energy of the fluid can be converted as for to arrive at work done on the blade if we can align the fluid jet in a cohesive manner or in a organized manner. So, this particular philosophy was utilized to generate continuous power. So, here what we have shown this figure is that the concept of this simple curve blade is extended by using a series of blades arranged in an organized fashion. But what is the basic difference is that and here the gap between each of the blade is utilized where the fluid jet is supposed to pass. Now, through these things uh, what may happen is that, so in a single blade it is possible to deflect the fluid jet in a completely opposite directions. But since there are finite widths of the blade and when we have a large number of blades or series of blades, they have to be mounted in certain finite widths of the rotor and of course, we also have to see that the fluid passes and it moves smoothly in this passage. So, it is almost uh, impossible to achieve 180 degree deflections. So, one uh, particular angle and in practical uh, cases the deflection is always less than 180 degrees. And of course, we cannot again hit the tip of the blade 
when you make this theta as 0 degree for all the series of blades, we have to keep some angle theta and this theta we call this as a the entry angle of the fluid jet into these blades and many times you refer this as a nozzle angles. So, what I have uh, explained here is that continuous power can be obtained by incorporating series of cylindrical blades mounted on the circumference of the wheel. So, that face of the jet continuously rotate the wheel, but then a high speed jet needs a nozzle that means to achieve this fluid jet we require a nozzle. And of course, it is almost uh, impossible to fix the nozzle uh, so that gives the fluid jet at 0 degree value of theta that will cater all the blades. So, for that reasons a shallow angle is theta is maintained and that is with respect to horizontal direction of the jet. And of course, we cannot achieve 180 degree deflections. So, the practical blade turn angle is less than 180 degree. Now, moving further to extend this impulse principle, if you want to really find out the how much power or efficiency of the blade which you are going to get, then what you do see here is use the principle of impulse momentum concept, which says that work done on the blade can be found out by the force in the direction of the blade which is equal to the change in the momentum of the fluid in the direction of the motions. And uh, the component of the stream velocity in the direction of the blade motion is we call this as a velocity of wheel. So, for that reasons what we require is that velocity vector diagrams. So, uh, we consider a single blade and try to find out the velocity diagrams. So, here we refer that when the fluid jet comes and uh, heats. So, this is what we say inlet velocity triangle and this is outlet velocity triangle. If you see this blade direction is B B and fluid uh, the angle at which the jet impinges that is theta, what we see is the relative velocity V R 1. So, for inlet condition we use the word 1 for outlet conditions we use the word 2. So, let us analyze that when since the blade is moving what we see is the uh, relative velocity V R 1 and uh, the absolute velocity of the fluid jet is V S 1. The net effect between these two uh, velocity is the V B which actually the blade velocity. Now, again uh, similar to this what we see since the blade is moving we see the relative velocity of the fluid that leaves as V R 2, V B is the same blade velocity and V S 2 is the absolute velocity of the fluid jet. Now, what we do here we include this angle and typically one is theta which is referred as a nozzle angle, other is phi and phi is nothing but is the angle that between V R 1 and horizontal directions another angle is gamma. So, gamma is with respect to horizontal and in the outlet triangle with respect to relative velocity fluid at the uh, exit. Then we have another angle delta that absolute velocity of the fluid at the exit that makes with the horizontals. Then what you do you try to put them in a uh, single plot or you try to merge them. So, there could be two possibilities one is the this delta can be less than 90 degree or delta can be greater than 90 degree. So, ideally speaking when you analyze this velocity triangles we will come back what is the significance of these two things. Mainly this delta value will detect whether your work output will be maximum or not. So, what we are now trying to see here with this information of theta, gamma, phi and delta, we need to create the shape of the blade in such a way which maximizes the work output or work done by the blade. So, how do you do that? So, for that reasons we have to find out what is the force imparted in the direction of the motion of the blade. 
So, that is always we see that positive x directions when you say vv direction is this that is positive x direction we always refer. So, by looking at this velocity diagrams we can find out that force imparted in the direction of the motion of the blade would be m dot into V s cos theta which is this component minus V s 2 cos delta. So, here if you say this particular figure, so V s 1 and V s 2 they are in the same directions, but if you look at this particular figure we have V s 2 and V s 1 they are in opposite directions. So, that does not matter to us because this delta will take care whether this quantity is a positive or negative. So, basically speaking in order to have maximum impact of this force the entire quantity uh, has to be added up. That means, your delta value should be such that if the cos delta becomes negative then this term uh, gets added up. So, obviously, since we call this as a wheel velocities so, we write them as V w 1 and V w 2. So, this wheel velocity that has to be added so that the force will be higher. So, this is the philosophy of designing the blade. Then uh, using this velocity triangles we can find out what is the V w 1 wheel velocity uh, at the inlet and at the uh, exit. We also can find out what is the uh, relative velocity of the fluid which is entering and exit from this blade uh, directions in the direction of in the positive uh, x directions. So, now once we are able to find out the force then we can find out what is the work done per unit time. This is uh, again multiplied by force into velocity that is V b. So, we can find out initial kinetic energy of the jet also half m b b s 1 square that is the kinetic energy at the inlet or entrance. Now, we looking at this then uh, we can find out the by knowing work done per unit time and uh, initial kinetic energy we will be in a position to find out the blade efficiency by taking this ratio. So, here I have already mentioned that whether the term cos delta is positive or negative that depends on the uh, what is this angle. So, ideally while doing this design of the blade one should ensure that entire term that work done term that V s 2 cos delta that means, the angle delta should be chosen in such a way that this gives an additional term to the work done per unit time. So, this will be more clear once you solve this problem by using this velocity diagrams. So, once we have force then we have work done per unit time then we can calculate the initial kinetic energy we are in a position to find out the blade velocity. So, the next step is to find out what is the optimum blade speed and maximum work and maximum efficiency. For that reasons again we have to use the same expression that is work done per unit time and kinetic energy then we have to find out the blade efficiency. Then for optimum blade velocity we must differentiate this uh, work expression with respect to V b and this gives the optimum blade speed would be V s cos theta by 2. So, here if you recall our earlier expression that is it was V s by 2 in a curved blade or in a flat plate, but here since it is at the jet is impinging at an angle theta. So, it becomes V s cos theta by 2 and correspondingly it gives half m dot into V s cos theta square and this here maximum work refers to the optimum blade uh, velocity. And finally, we can find out maximum blade efficiency. So, maximum blade efficiency we can find out take the ratio we say it is a cos theta whole square which means if a theta is a 0 means at 0 degree nozzle angle we have maximum blade efficiency. This is the theory what we get for the simple single core blade. Now, another point I need to emphasize uh, many times we consider this term phi is equal to gamma just to emphasize the fact so that relative velocity at the inlet and exit remains same. So, this particular condition is called as a symmetric blade. So, there is no loss of velocity coefficients that means, during this there is no loss of relative velocity from the entrance to the exit. So, this is another design criteria and of course, exit wheel velocity is 0 
and absolute velocity straight in the exit direction. This is what it means. Now, let us understand the velocity diagram in a difference perspective in terms of thermodynamic effects. So, here what we have done so far using the rotodynamic principle or velocity diagrams, you try to emphasize how much work we are going to get. But uh, the other side of uh, the thing is that fluid has uh, the when the steam comes, it comes with certain uh, energy associated with it because it is a superheated steam, it has a very high value of enthalpy. Now, how that enthalpy we are trying to correlate with this rotation of the blade. So, for that uh, we find that work transfer per unit time by using these uh, thermodynamic equations as enthalpy difference H1 minus H2 into v, uh, m dot into V s 1 square by minus V s 2 square by 2. Now, this enthalpy difference typically since the blade is rotating, so instead of absolute velocity we see this relative velocity. So, by putting this one we can uh, write this uh, w dot as m dot by 2 into v s 1 square minus v s 2 square and then we have v r 1 square minus v r 2 square. So, this is the actual expressions that we are going to get, but ideally speaking what we see here uh, because of this uh, rotation this relative velocity term reduces the work. So, which means if you want to uh, maximize the power this relative velocity difference components has to be totally removed. So, for that reasons we introduce this concept that if it has to be purely impulse that means you design the blade in such a way that will have negligible difference in this relative velocity components. So, that turbine will be called as impulse pure impulse turbines and where absolute velocity of the fluid is takes the dominance. So, this is the concept of looking for a pure impulse turbines and while designing the blades it has to be ensured that this difference should be as minimal as possible. Now, to account for whether it is a pure impulse or uh, not uh, we define a term called as velocity coefficients that takes the ratio that is k v is equal to v r 2 by v r 1. So, the impulse turbine blade with friction that means, if there are some frictions obviously, there will be a relative velocity uh, difference between the inlet from the exit to entrance. So, we introduce a term how, what is the tolerance level what velocity coefficient we can assume that is one aspect. Second aspect what we can say is that we can find out the energy which is being carried by the fluid that is nothing but the enthalpy drop uh, of the fluid when the uh, energy is dumped onto the blade. So, that is m dot into delta h s that comes from uh, separately to by which the energy the fluid carries and that is being transferred in getting this work. So, the ratio between these two that means, uh, we call this as a stage efficiency which is defined as the ratio of work transfer through the blade divided by the total enthalpy drop of the fluid for entire stage. Stage means that includes nozzle as well as blade. So, in our previous case we say that nozzle is the integral part of the blade because it supplies the fluid onto the blade. So, uh, entire stage that is the reason the entire stage means it includes nozzle as well as the blade if the fluid were isentropic. So, this is all about uh, uh, you need to discuss. Uh, now, we will try to solve a numerical problems based on our discussions. So, till this point of time we are clear about the inputs principle, we are clear about the velocity triangles at the entrance at the exit. Now, based on this philosophy we are trying to uh, solve this problem. What it says is that the steam enters the nozzle at an angle 20 degree for an impulse turbine at 30 bar and 320 degree centigrade. Exit condition is 15 bar. The mass flow rate of the steam is 45 kg per second and nozzle efficiency is uh, 90 percent. The blade is symmetrical and it travels optimum velocity with velocity coefficient of 0.97. It means that blade is symmetrical and due to the frictions only there is a hardly loss of 3 percent of velocity 
from the entrance to the exit. So, we need to draw the velocity diagram first. Now, after drawing this velocity diagram, we have to calculate the uh, following parameters like blade angles. The blade angle I mean the tip of the blades. So, the R in the angles that is gamma, delta and phi. Power delivered by the turbine per stage and blade efficiency and stage efficiency. So, for that reason we have uh, if you recall our diagram like this already I have explained V s 1, V r 1, V b. Angle between V s 1 and V b is theta. Angle between V r 1 and with horizontal uh, direction is phi. Similarly, uh, this is your uh, inlet and at the exit the angle between V s 2 and horizontal is delta angle between V r 2 and horizontal is gamma. So, while by merging this these are the angles, but to analyze the velocity diagram in a different way we have to merge to these two diagrams, but before you do that first we need to find out what is about the steam conditions. So, for that we have to recall our study that either you draw temperature entropy diagram or enthalpy entropy diagram we see that the steam that comes uh, somewhere at from the nozzle and had this process been isentropic it would have come back to this S that means isentropic process otherwise it is coming at, at as S 1. And at this conditions that means, this particular condition is 30 bar and 320 degree centigrade and exit condition is 15 bar. So, this pressure is 15 bar and this pressure is 30 bar. So, we have to use our uh, previous uh, study or concept to find out the steam conditions. So, solution you start with first thing you need to find out what is this V s 1. So, V s 1 information will come from this nozzle efficiency and enthalpy drop. To calculate this enthalpy drop we need the steam conditions at the nozzle end uh, at the inlet of the turbine and the exit of the turbine. So, at the inlet or you say steam condition leaving the nozzle we say that is 15 bar and entering the nozzle thirty bar three twenty degree centigrade. So, at these conditions we can say H n that is inlet conditions that is at 30 bar and 320 degree centigrade the steam table gives 3043.4 kilo joule per kg. Of course, we require S n that is enthalpy at the nozzle end that value is 6.6245 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, once we have this S n we can say S n is equal to S s that means, at this stage is process is isentropic and that number will be 6.6245. Now, at the leaving condition condition will be now 15 bar and entropy 6.6245 kilo joule per kg. So, this condition will give you this enthalpy value as 2899.3. So, then we have nozzle efficiency definition we can write H n minus H s 1 divided by H n minus H s that value is 0 0.9. So, we have H n, we have H s, 
we what we do not know is actual condition that leaves the nozzle. So, this will give you H S 1 as 2913.7 kilojoule per kg. Then V S 1 is nothing but twice times delta H square root of delta H that is twice into delta H means uh, 3043.4 minus 2913.7 into 1000 because it is in kilojoule. So, this will give you V S 1 as 509.3 meter per second. So, this is the condition that V S 1 we are able to find out. Now, once you are able to find out the V S 1, then our next step is to construct velocity triangle. So, to a simplified way of constructing the velocity triangle is to merge both inlet and exit condition in a single graph. So, what we see is that take because in the both inlet entrance and the exit angle the common is V B. So, we say that V S 1 comes and this angle is theta then we have B R 1 this angle is phi then we have this V S 2 and V R 2. and this angle is delta and this angle is gamma sorry this is delta and this angle would be 180 minus delta. So, what we can do we can drop a vertical from this point and this point and uh, note down as A, B, C, then we have P, R and here we have D. So, from this diagrams we will be now using uh, the trigonometric principles we have to try to find out uh, or analyze inlet velocity triangle and exit velocity triangle. So, let us concentrate on inlet. So, from this inlet velocity triangle so we consider A D P. So, we say uh, A D is equal to B R 1 sin phi that is equal to B S 1 sin theta. Again C D is equal to B S 1 cos theta minus B B that is equal to B R 1 cos phi. So, these two equation will imply tan phi is equal to B S 1 sin theta minus B S 1 cos theta minus B B. Now, similarly, outlet triangle from this outlet triangle we can find out P R is equal to B R 2 sin gamma that is equal to B S 2 sin 180 minus delta. Then this means B R 2 sin gamma if this is gamma this is also gamma is equal to B S 2 sin 180 minus delta would be sin delta. Again we have C R is equal to C B plus B R and C R is nothing but B R 2 cos gamma that is equal to B B plus B S 2 cos 180 minus delta. So, this will give you the expression B B 
is equal to B R 2 cos gamma plus B S 2 cos delta. So, this is one expression B B. Now, uh, from these two expressions we can also find out what is tan delta. Tan delta would be B R 2 sin gamma divided by B B minus B R 2 cos gamma. Then we have also working expressions that K B velocity coefficient as B R 2 by B R 1. By using this expressions we will be now insert the values. So, first thing in this problem we will be finding out bullet optimum value velocity. So, we have V s 1 as 509.3 meter per second, then we can find out V optimum V s 1 cos theta by 2. So, here theta is equal to 20 degree. So, this will be V optimum would be 239.2 meter per second, 239.3 meter per second. So, once we have optimum speed, then uh, we can find out tan phi as B S 1 sin theta divided by B S 1 cos theta minus B B. So, by B B now it becomes B optimum. So, we know theta, we know B S. So, this will give you tan phi as 174.2 divided by 239.3, this number is 0 0.728. So, this will give you phi as 36 degree. So, we know K V uh, as 0 0.97. So, from this we can find out that V R 2 by V R 1 or you have to find out V R 1. So, V R 1 from our previous expressions we can find out V S 1 sin theta by sin phi. So, this we get from the inlet velocity triangle. So, we know these numbers. So, this is 1 74.2 because theta we know B S 1 we know by sin phi is sin 36 degree. So, this number is 296.8 meter per seconds. Since K V is 0 0.97, so this will give you V R 2. So, V R 2 we will get as 288 meter per seconds. Now, once you are knowing with V R 2, then we will be able to find out tan delta because we know Vr2, Vb is known gamma. So, since the blade is symmetric, so gamma can be equal to phi that is 36 degree. So, this is due to the symmetric nature of the blade. So, looking at that, we can find out tan delta as 288 sin 36 divided by 239.3 minus Vr2 is 288 cos 36 degree. So, this will give you delta as 88 degree. Once you know delta as 88 degree, then we can say Vs2 sin delta is equal to B R 2 sin gamma. So, we have uh, B R 2 is known, gamma is known, delta is known. So, this will give you B S 2 as 288 sin 36 divided by sin 88. So, B S 2 number is 171 meter per seconds. So, we are now we have all the information delta and V uh, S 1, then we need to calculate the power. For power calculations, let me 
see here work done w dot would be m dot b b into b s 1 cos theta minus b s 2 cos delta. So, all the blade angles are calculated. So, part 1 is done. So, part b is work done or uh, power delivered by the turbine per stage. So, here we have all the expressions. So, here m dot is equal to 45 kg per second. B s 1 is 509.3 meter per second. B s 2 is 171 meter per second. Theta is equal to 20 degree. Delta is equal to 88 degrees. So, by inserting these things we will we say W dot would be 5089 kilowatt. Then blade efficiency is that is part C is nothing but W dot by M dot into B S 1 square by 2. By inserting this number we can get eta B would be 87.2 percent because W dot we get from this B S 1 and M dot we already know. Then stage efficiency W dot into M dot into H n minus H s. So, this H n minus H s we have already calculated in the first slide. So, uh, where we have H n is equal to 3043.4 kilo joule per kg H s is equal to 2899.3 kilo joule per kg. By putting this we can find out eta stage efficiency is 78 percent. So, here uh, all this number w dot we get from this part b m dot is 45 kg per second these two numbers we have already found out. So, basically speaking here in the entire exercise tells us the important fact is that when you calculate this particular term this cos delta term is either very small. So, in this case this number is about uh, 5 uh, or 6 this may negligible with respect to this or it will be delta value will be such that it will give a substantial uh, the cos delta will be uh, angle should be such that this negative term becomes positive. This, this is one aspect. So, this will uh, give the benefit of for maximizing the work. Then uh, other important uh, concept is that the velocity diagram or triangle should be drawn properly and more or less we observe that in a given steam turbines the blade efficiency or stage efficiency they if should be in the range of 80 percent or above. That means, when you are doing this exercise or design the blade and finding this efficiency is not more than 80 percent, then it will be considered as an inefficient design. So, this is the important thrust point in the design of blades by choosing a suitable blade angles. With this I will conclude. Thanks for your attention.